Hey everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna talk about something we don't normally talk about all that much. I wanna to talk to you guys about row covers and the different types that you can use and what are the benefits and the negatives of different types of row cover. Uh, there's three main types that I would recommend and most people use that you can easily find. Is uh, one, you have plastic. Uh, we then also have fleece and we have mesh. And the plastic's probably the best one at the very beginning of the season because that's gonna give you the most heat, right? I had these beds actually here. These are my, uh, my spring crop beds that like the cooler weather. So things like carrots and onions. Uh, we have things like lettuces and brassicas. We have turnips and radishes and things like that, beets. So these things here really benefited at a very early planting just by giving them a little bit of extra heat and that plastic did wonders. Um, what it does for the plants is it actually warms the soil quite a bit. The nighttime temperatures really dissipate, right? Because it's just plastic, it's not insulated very well. So that heat eventually leaves the, uh, the plants, but it stays, it compounds in the soil. And the, the, war the warmer those soil temperatures are, the earlier of crops you can get. We had our cold frame back here, which is this wooden raised bed. Our cold frame was attached to this with plastic on top. And my peas have just been rock stars with the help of that plastic. They've got off to a wonderful start. Some of this we planted a bit later because uh, you know, of what was going on with the pandemic. We decided to create these beds a bit later in the season. But the, the peas did wonderful with the plastic, but at a certain point of the year, it just gets a little too warm, right? And these cool loving crops that don't like necessarily as much heat, they don't really benefit all that much from the plastic anymore. So you got to take the plastic off, but you want to give them some sort of protection, right? Because what about critters and bugs and insects and different things that could get to these, these plants? We want to keep protecting them. Yeah, you could use actually what I've used in the past, because this is not, these row covers are not just meant for a little bit of extra heat, right? Like the plastic does. It also protects the crops pretty well from critters and insects, right? So what I've used in the past is actually chicken wire. I could have put chicken wire all the way around these areas here of, of the beds, and that would have kept a lot of the larger animals out. It wouldn't have kept the birds out, and it wouldn't have kept the insects out. But I have things like rabbits, squirrels, skunks, possums, um, you know, you name it, comes in, in this backyard, even deer occasionally comes back here and can mess with this stuff. So you gotta protect it in some way, but specifically some of this stuff, now that it's really warm, at least now it's June, if we fast forward a little bit, uh, certain insects really bother these crops. And that's why I'm, I'm moving over now, away from the fleece to a mesh, which is the insect netting. But before I get too ahead of myself, this mesh here, or this fleece, I'm sorry, I keep mixing them up. Um, but this particular fleece is really great early in the season as well. In the spring, it gives these plants about four to five degrees Fahrenheit of temperatures. And it doesn't necessarily affect the soil temperatures all that much like the plastic does, but it does keep that frost away uh, in those really close times of the year when you may have a late frost. Um, it gives them a little bit of extra warmth and they really, really like that. The difference between not having this and having the fleece is wonderful. The issue with the fleece is it doesn't last very long. We can always get a plastic that, uh, that lasts quite a bit of time. Um, you can order this stuff six mil standard clear is what I like to go with. You find the right stuff, you find out how long it's gonna last and they normally last quite a bit of time. But you don't have to come in here and keep replacing this stuff. But the mesh you do, or the fleece you do, I'm sorry. So this fleece row cover here is just a bit fragile. And if you use it for about two seasons, you'll see at the end of that second season or the beginning of that third season, it's really starting to uh, degrade and rip at different areas. And it's just better if you take care of it, maybe you use it a little bit less, get a little bit more mileage out of it that way. But I swear to you, this stuff is wonderful. And I just think that these row covers are not necessarily meant just for farmers. I've been using fleece for years. I've been using it longer than the mesh and also longer than the plastic. And I have to say this stuff really is worth the money, even though it doesn't last very long. Um, so, you know, look into it, try it. 
Um, I grew my arugula under this fleece this year. Oh my God, I got so much arugula. It got off to a really great start. All this stuff in the beginning of the season greatly benefits, and even in the end of the season, greatly benefits from this fleece. Now, you can't necessarily forget about though, the insect netting, which is this mesh. And this is a much more durable material that's gonna last you probably longer than the plastic would. And in all honesty, it's gonna keep all the insects out. I may have to come in here and actually put some things around the edges here just to, to hold it down a bit. But I'm not necessarily worried about insects on most of this stuff. The, the brassicas are an issue. Um, at least here with the white fly, also the cabbage moth. We have a lot of my cucumbers, my melons, my squash that are gonna get protected. And those are from the cucumber beetle, which spreads the Fusarium wilt. I'm telling you guys, it depends on where you live. You're gonna have different pests. You're gonna have different problems. Um, you may even have birds that like some of these crops. I don't have any birds that do that, but I'll tell you that it's a big deal having these things covered. It really is. Um, and it just makes certain crops so much easier. You know, my cucumbers, I've been banging my head against the wall for years because they all inevitably get that cucumber beetle. They inevitably get the Fusarium wilt. We're gonna grow them actually in this area here now that we took the, uh, the garlic out and we're gonna cover those with this insect netting. Now what's nice about the insect netting is it doesn't really give any additional heat. It just keeps the insects out. So now that it's June, around June 1st, I'm actually taking off the fleece. I have it here for demonstration. We're taking this off and we're adding the insect netting on. So at certain points of the year, you may put on different row covers. You may have different row covers for different things. Maybe you just don't have enough row cover and you just wanna throw something on. Uh, maybe it's not the right material, but you just need to get something on it. But you know, at the end of the day, this stuff is just so, so valuable that I wanted to do a little video on it. And this fleece and the mesh here, we're actually sponsored. We're doing a little bit of a sponsored video today um, from a company called Ag Fabric. And they reached out to me after I hit 20,000 subscribers and they sent me this, this insect netting and also the, uh, the fleece. And this one here was 10 feet by 30. It was uh, pretty affordable. Their website's agfabric.com. Easy to deal with. I'm sure I haven't tested this stuff just yet for its longevity, but I know that the, uh, this mesh here lasts a very long time. And across the board, it doesn't matter who makes this, this mesh, it just doesn't last nearly as long as the other two materials that I mentioned, the plastic and the, uh, and the mesh. So, you know, it is what it is. I hope you guys will check them out. Um, they seem like a nice company and they definitely seem like they're offering great products because it's hard to find this stuff affordably. I'll tell you that. Um, I looked all over the place trying to find something and then actually they reached out to me and I was like, oh, well, <laughs> it seems like a really nice thing, right? I needed it, I use it. Um, and they just gave me uh, pretty much exactly what I needed. It's nice. I mean, how often has that happened? But anyway, um, I wanna thank you guys here for watching this one. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, hit that subscribe button for me and check out our blog, figboss.com. If you guys use any row covers, let me know down in the comments. I think they really are well worth using. Oh, I for totally forgot. Let me just show you guys really quickly here. This over here is actually some mesh that I decided to throw over my gumi. And you know, it's not perfect. It's not covering the whole thing perfectly, but this is gonna act as a bird netting. And I just don't have enough bird netting. Plus bird netting is another material that I don't really like using actually. And the bird netting, what it does is these plants grow right through the bird netting. Then when you take the bird netting off after the crop's finished, you ruin a lot of the leaves, you break a lot of branches. You also, in the process of having the bird netting on these plants, you inevitably end up having a lot of fruit that ends up falling off because the, the bird netting holes are quite big. I'll show it to you over here. I have it on the strawberries. And it just doesn't, 
provide enough protection for certain things. It's great for these strawberries because the leaves push the netting up and instead of growing through the netting, they push it up and it protects the fruits for the most part underneath from birds and critters and things like that. But I'll tell you, because of these large holes in the netting, it just creates a whole bunch of issues with things like my raspberries, things like probably that gumi. Um, also my currants are fruiting right now and the currants are so small that the netting gets caught on them all the time and rips off currants. So it's just annoying. I think there's a number of different products and things you can use and it depends on the situation, what you're growing, at time of the year. Um, yeah, so thank you guys again. We'll see everybody soon. Stay safe out there, guys.